Good morning. Uh, well, y'all already know who it is, Target Individual CJBK. And, um, yeah, I put in a couple of, you know, posts that, um, you know, I was feeling like overwhelmed or or feeling as if, uh, I don't know, like I'm under a lot of stress. I mean, well, I mean, shoot, any, every TI is under a lot of stress, you know, but the one thing I've always been able to be really great at is maintaining my peace and making sure that I try my best not to allow anyone or anything to disrupt my peace, you know? And, um, you know, in, in that sense, um, I don't necessarily have so much conflict in my life to the point where most of the time I go days or weeks without conflict, you know? I mean, there's been times where I could recall probably going a month without ever actually having a, a, an exchange with someone where, like, you know, if I accidentally bump them and they get mad and like, yo, what up? I ain't never, I ain't, I don't even remember to recall the last time I had something like that happen. You know, so, um, yeah, I think my girlfriend and I, we kind of, I think we broke up. <laughs> Because, um, well, long story short, um, she's been having a lot of ideas float around in her head. And, you know, as T.I.s, God knows what could be implanted into the mind of a T.I., right? Especially when you want to divide two people. But you know what? At the end of the day, I, I, at least I've known her prior to you know when my targeting officially became you know more noticeable or obvious um yeah so what i'm getting at is like okay she doesn't believe i'm masculine enough or, or she doesn't believe i'm not man enough to be like I guess her future husband you know and um you know like like I've always known that I'm passive aggressive I, I know I'm passive aggressive but that's also because well when I look around in the world I see so much <laughs> aggression <laughs> especially living in New York City I see so much aggression everybody is aggressive for something everybody is aggressive everybody is aggressive for something it could be it could be things that you that they actually need that they're aggressive for and then there's then there's things that most people don't even need to really be caring about and put so much energy towards but yet they're so aggressive towards it right so you know she you know her family they they're all like in this uh contractual agreement with somebody who's supposed to be well you know to to my understanding they're like some type of survival <laughs> survival leader of something or whatever you know and you know he's like former military and um the guy that they're you know family friends with you know he's former military so like they have a certain type of mindset and i know every time like you know, we used to talk to each other, you know, definitely while at work. She would always say, you know, oh, people from the army or the military just got like a, they just got this, this mindset about them. Like they just don't think about the things that like normal civilians think about. Like they think about like survival and stuff like that. And I'm just like, so I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I believe I've been surviving pretty damn well in my life, especially for me not to have as, and like, like I don't have a bunch of traumas. I don't have a bunch of, you know, fight stories. I don't have, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't have a bunch of like events or, or situations in my life where, you know, 
I had to, you know, uh, I guess prove how, what's the word, masculine I am. Because I usually, I usually don't like to entertain that energy because that type of energy, it breeds, it usually breeds something else to come up to. You know, something that's low vibration. Like, I believe you can be masculine and not feel like you're trying to, like, show other people that you're masculine. You know, like, like it doesn't have to be a show, you know. But I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's that part. You know, she, she's deciding that, like, you know, she's... She's like, oh, well, I'm helpful that, you know, I'm like thankful that you showed me like, 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 like everything I needed to know about targeting and da, da, da. But I feel like, I feel like that's all, that's all that, you know, you talk about lately and, and, you know, you don't really show, you don't really, she's like, I don't really teach her anything else. And I'm like. First and foremost, <laughs> I, for one, um, I believe I put forth an amazing effort and patience and a large amount of time <laughs> to, you know, be as accommodating and, you know, helpful with her and her current situation, you know, and this is, this is, mind you, this is also realizing that her current situation is no different from like when we first met so it's like you know I'm not I'm not judging her or anything like that but I'm just kind of like alright whatever um I'm the one that's not enough in this situation I mean and, you know it's kind of sad because I kind of went into a relationship already thinking <laughs> already thinking that like for whatever reason, I feel like I'm never going to be enough for her. You know? Because, like... Okay, I can understand the part where someone's like, Oh, you know, you used to wear colognes and you used to, you know... Basically, you used to keep up your appearance and you used to do all these things. Mind you, okay, I get it. That's normal for something like that to happen in a relationship because... You know, um, the psychological part about when you are doing all that prep, all that, you know, appearance, keep up stuff and whatnot, you're mostly doing it because you want the attention of other people around you. You know, by the time I turned about maybe 27, 28, I necessarily, I kind of pretty much stopped living my life like that. So in living in New York, you got so many people that live for the attention of others, or that live to show just how alpha or masculine or feminine or or non-gender specific, you know, there's so many people out here that's trying to live that same exact way. Me, I choose to live how I want to live. I choose when I wanna be aggressive or, or masculine. I choose when I wanna be you know, lovey-dovey or, or when I want to be, you know, um, tempered or whatever the case, I mean, whatever the case is, you know, like, and I'm, and I'm an empath. So it's like, it's normal for me to have to constantly regulate the amount of energy that I put forth into anything or anyone, right? Now, um, that's, that's as far as, that's as far as that. So I'm already in my mind, it's kind of like, okay, well, if she's going to break off like that. Then I guess, well, I mean, I mean, it's no love lost. Like I still, I still care about it and stuff, but you know, with this gang stalking shit, um, I mean, for the most part, when it comes to this gang stalking shit, the first person you have to learn to protect and manage is yourself. That's the first person you gotta learn to protect and manage. When, when you get on, when you're in an airplane, right? 
and the, and there's and the safety masks come down. What do they do? Put your mask on first. So I already know that I have, you know, my own things going on in my life, but I don't. I do my best not to. I do my best not to actually like allow it to spill over onto anyone or into whatever environment that I'm in because I constantly want to always be a brighter or more vibrant energy in a room. You know, like when I come into a room, I'm used to like, when I come into a room, I'm used to either one of two things. <laughs> I'm either used to people <laughs> looking in my direction um, with a sight of, I guess, or with the feeling of, of anxiousness, whether that, ang whether that anxiousness is a good thing or a bad thing, you know, or I'm used to people just not even really caring if I walk into a room at all, you know, but at the end of the day, I feel all of that energy. That's why I developed the mentality to not necessarily care about what other people think or feel. As long as I'm not causing harm to anyone or I'm not, you know, disrupting anyone else's peace, that's that's my peace right there. That's how I'm helping give someone else peace. If I don't mess up your peace, you don't mess up my peace. We're working on each other's peace, but I don't know. It is what it is, you know. And then, then you know, I got the V2K, so they're they're all like basically people who live on pro alpha mentalities, pro, you know, um, I guess I guess you could call them intellectual savages, you know, because they basically want to make themselves seem like they're super smart because they augmented their bodies and. Now that they actually have access to other people's minds and they're stealing knowledge and information about other people's lives so that they can have a, a, a leg up or uh, an advance on other people, which is like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like when you think about what they're doing in life, it's like playing Call of Duty and then knowing you have a cheat where you can't die at all, but you could just basically just like... <laughs> You could basically just go around killing everybody, but nobody can kill you. That's basically what this is. It's them having a cheat code on everything in, or just about everything in life. Let me not be too wild with that, that word, but it's just about a majority of things in life. But a lot of the things that they're so-called, you know, basically having all this, this, this um, control over it's all material things though. Everything that they control is a material. Everything that they control is a material. They have to use materials in order to hack you. They have to use devices in order to gain access to you. You know, it's, it's like when you think about it, I guess the TV programming wasn't, wasn't good enough. You know, music wasn't working strong enough. So what did they have to do? They had to actually start building more advanced technology to transmit frequencies that will resonate with yours. Then they lock onto your frequency and make it so that they can control just how you think, how you feel, and how you act in the world. <sighs> I guess that's what I guess that's what masculine people do. I guess that's what aggressive people do, right? You know, it's not enough that I have to actually, I literally have to battle against people <laughs> on all three trifecta of warfare, psychological, <laughs> spiritual, and technological, who are trying to basically destroy the very being of what makes me, me. You know, and they want everyone to be on this hive mind mentality. All of these, these, these techno pagans, these technocrats or or Scientologists whatever you want to call them secret society members all these different people they're all living these 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 fake lives when you think about it they're fake because it's like 
everything that they got, did they actually work for it? Did they actually work for it or did they just steal everything that they got? You know, when you think about now, it's like when you think about someone who's like a a best-selling writer or 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 actor or or not well, I don't know, something that has to deal with intellectual property. Or or when it comes to like becoming a you know, like a like a, a, a practitioner or a nurse or or anything that involves you having to get testing and stuff. Just imagine just imagine you busting your ass trying to read all these books and actually retain information the good old fashioned way, right? And then here comes here comes these people with all this technology and they're basically all they gotta do is take the digital data of that information and just bloop just basically download it into their brain. Next thing you know, they're they're a fucking <laughs> master at I don't know you know replacing replacing bones back together or something like that I don't know but anyway yeah like but to some you know what to some degree this also gives me less to worry about because when I first Decided I was going to, you know, start dating her again. Um, the way the way we started up again, it, it felt it felt off anyway, because, you know, she was she was already like complaining about some guy that she was dating already. Me, I, I mean, to tell you the truth, I wasn't necessarily intentionally trying to get into another relationship, but I wouldn't mind trying again. You know, because I really, I really do love and appreciate who she is and what she does, you know, but, um, you know, this is like, like, I don't know. This is also to a point where she didn't necessarily, um, she believed she was experiencing forms of electronic harassment. Um, prior, you know, to me disclosing to her like over a year ago that I was being targeted. And since like, like since she been dating me, I, I noticed like, like, that, you know, whatever they've been doing before, they've definitely upped it. They've increased what they've been doing to her. Now, I'm going to say this. She does not believe in God anymore or she does not like i'm like she doesn't believe in like spiritual stuff she believes in something called ta culture um i don't know much about it i haven't really looked into it myself but apparently they mostly believe in reasoning and you know um they mostly believe in i don't know they mostly believe in their their thinking capabilities more than anything you know so completely take god out the question you know everything that they need to do in the universe is all coming from their mind you know they control the universe with their mind everything about them all deals with the mind so i'm like if i left it up to just my mind to get through targeting i kid you not i probably would have crashed a long time ago you know, and um, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely a struggle. You know, um, I'll say that. Uh, I'll say this. Um, I think prior to actually dating and stuff like that, I was I was living pretty decently. You know, like I had my routine with the I had my routine with, the, you know, the gang stalkers and whatnot. And um this is and that's before i even learned most some of the things that i've learned now so i'm like then i was holding my own pretty good you know uh, and i still am i, I can't take no credit for myself because i'm also fight i'm all, we're also all battling against a, a enemy that's masters yeah. at hiding you know um deception and and division you know they are loose farm workers they are they are they're like 
like this is basically slavery right and all handlers they're like the ones with the whip you know and then to be honest everybody else that's uh everyone else that's basically like not being tormented i would consider them the uh what they call the light the house the house slaves right those who are being tormented where we will be considered the field slave you know but um because at the end of the day it doesn't matter you're still being forced against your will to do things and you are living so comfortably by following their instructions that you have no intention of actually trying to fight back against the one who is doing everything to make you feel the way that you feel and you know what to each their own you know i believe when god said the meek shall inherit the earth i believe that you know at some point because right now we're already seeing the subtle changes in the universe subtle energy shifts and I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, we're all going to witness a complete and utter shift in what it means to be a human being, what it means to be a functional society, what it means to actually be healthy and wealthy. And then last but not least, we're also going to have to, we're also going to see what true love actually looks like you know and um right now a lot of these people don't realize they're only they're only loving based off of what someone can can do or provide for them you know and uh it's funny because before before i started um before all this game stuff and stuff started um i was i was already working in the restaurant and hospitality industry so i was actually climbing my own ladder um working my way up to you know making some pretty damn good money and uh i had my own schedule really um only thing is is i work most of the nights and i was getting tired of that though but you know at some point as I continued to work my way up, I was definitely, you know, I was definitely moving into more and more, um, well, I was growing in pay, growing in in status of, of where I worked and everything like that, you know? And then, uh, you know, COVID happened and the, the quarantine and next thing you know, I got furloughed and then ended up, you know, doing this uh, delivery job because well shoot it was it was essential and it you know mind you mind you this is after like i got this job after let me see i got this job in february of 2021 my targeting really didn't become more noticeable until um like october of 2020 right so this is after the fact that they threatened me to not go to the hospital and tell them that I was, you know, hearing voice transmissions. And this is also after the fact that like, when I went to the hospital and I told them about my situation, they told me, oh, well, now since you told the hospital about us, now you have to become a police officer. So I fought back against the idea of joining the police force, knowing that there are people there are nefarious people using highly advanced technology that is basically hacking the central nervous system of almost every single person on this planet. So now by me joining the police force, I would be considered like a Trojan horse of any investigation that would happen. I don't have no hate towards you know law enforcement and I have no hate towards military. But one thing I cannot fucking stand is um somebody who's just just i i what if that ain't treason or or whatever i don't even know what you call it but like i'm just thinking to myself like what if 
what if I'm actually on a case and I'm trying to shut down like a whole like human trafficking ring, right? And then all of a sudden here go to the, the um, here goes the handlers. They're basically like, oh, nah, you can't, you can't, pro you can't arrest him or you can't, you know, have him as a suspect because, you know, he's, you know, he's a part of us or some shit. But I have all this evidence proving that this dude deserves to be locked away for, for two decades, right? But then they gonna prevent me or other or other officers from doing their job because they have access to my eyes, ears, memories, all these different things. So I'm thinking to myself like, I'm not gonna become no cop because I don't feel comfortable actually um, dismantling something that actually can be improved you know and doing it that way no that's not that's not going to be the way because at the end of the day they're also doing corrupt things you know with this technology so it's you know no i could do bad all on my own i don't need no one to be coaching me into doing worse you know and then be rewarded for doing more harm to others or something like that so i was just like no so I, when I found when I found a job that I could get, it just happened to be this job. So 